Uh, greetings everybody, Joseph Green Mountain Gold Trap and this is something I was not going to do because it just seems kind of prideful and boastful but uh, some of my viewers, GTAO Vlogs for one, requested that I show this for those like himself who don't have a GPAA um, membership. He hasn't renewed his membership so he wanted to see this and some other people wanted to see it as well. So. May June 2019 issue it just came the other day and starting on page 24 there's an article history and treasures abound prospecting New England and by Elix I can't quite read her last name but anyway um let's see here Bernard if I'm pronouncing it properly but anyway, um, when you move to page 28 and 29, let me move this over here so I can read it. Starting in Lost Mines, we have, uh, man, that's not going to focus, you're not going to be able to read it, but New England may not have faced a gold rush on the same scale as western states, but gold is present in all six states in New England. In fact, the precious metal that can be found in the region is ex exceptional in terms of quality and some of the purest in the world between 22 and 24 carat. And I have found, or I have gold from Alaska, Arizona, North Carolina, and none have the brilliance and color of New England gold, says Terrence Hannon, the man behind Center of the Earth Mining YouTube channel. She forgot to put mining in there. But that's our buddy Terry. Um, so he's part of this as well. We both worked with this writer. And it says, however, getting it, getting to it requires time and effort. There aren't riches to be had by simply prospecting. In our area of New England, a prospector needs to be able to move a lot of material in a day just to get a gram, declares Joseph Moranville, which is myself, Green Mountain Gold Trap, a Vermont resident and inventor of the Green Mountain Gold Trap. Although smaller nuggets are not unheard of, the vast majority of gold is fine placer gold. And then it says some more. Um, Terry's mentioned some more in here. I might as well just keep reading. Nevertheless, for a relatively short time in the mid-1850s, a minor gold fever engulfed New England, mainly in the northern part of the region, but also in Rhode Island and Connecticut. In its heyday, Vermont may have had up to 40 or 50 gold mines, Hannah remembers ex his excitement when he discovered that gold mines might be closer than he thought. When I found out there used to be a gold mine just a few miles up the dirt road, I was ecstatic. At the time it was called Richard's Gold Mine. It had a 150 foot shaft next to the Williams River. Then I, then I read what? Then I read turned out some pretty good gold in the late 1800s and early 20s. A little clerical error there. The flood of 1927 is said to have cut the supply of gold off and that the Williams had not produced like it once did. None of the New England mines could however complete or com could compete with the western mines in terms of productivity and the effort necessary to extract gold couldn't justify commercial exploitation. Rapidly the mines closed and were forgotten. Well I can add to that there. What happened was a lot of, um, like here in Vermont, it was a lot of farmers who ended up getting into the, uh, the gold mining and they discovered that they were making more farming than they were mining so they ended up stopping mining and going back to farming. Um, the villages so far, uh, the villages that had grown around them disappeared in the wilderness. So far, more than 20 lost mines have been rediscovered in New England in recent years. New England states are also rich in precious minerals, including tourmaline, topaz, barrel, and quartz. Hannon, a Connecticut local, recommends a visit to several quarries for a chance to find some beautiful specimens. The old mine park in Trumbo, Connecticut is known for white topaz and shelite, which under UV light glows blue and white. 
Falls Village, Marble Quarry, and Can uh, Canaan, Connecticut is, oh, is notorious for white termalite crystals. The CCC Quarry in Cockaponset State Forest, which is an abandoned open pit mine, brings in Golden Barrel. The Nathan Hall Quarry in Meshomasic <laughs> State Park in East Hampton, Connecticut, is known for all for Almadine crystals and green barrel. Finally, the Case Quarries in Portland, Connecticut, is renowned for blue blue green barrel. Prospecting in New England, although the prospect of treasure hunting in New England can justifiably ignite passion or passions. A sobering thought rests in the laws involving or involved. Most of the land in New England is privately owned, despite its apparent wilderness. Less than six six percent of Maine, the largest and, uh, and arguably least dense densely populated state in New England, is owned by the government, national forests, state parks, etc. Private owners range from large timber companies to smaller landowners. Asking permission before prospecting or treasure hunting, preferably in writing, is indispensable. Laws and regulations vary by state and are subject to change, so don't neglect to do your due diligence before starting on a project. Overall, only panning is usually allowed for prospecting and only hands and pans permitted. In Vermont, use of tools from shovels to sluice boxes and suction dredges comes with regulations and requires a permit that costs $25 for state residents and $50 for non-residents. However, getting approval is more than pure formality in some areas. Vermont can be notoriously difficult to deal with. In 2017, yeah, in 2017 exactly eight permits were granted here in Vermont. I am certain many more people applied. If your application is denied, you guessed it. The state of Vermont keeps the fee paid, reports Moranville. That's me again. He developed his product, the Green Mountain Gold Trap, primarily as a way to pursue his passion in accordance with the law. I have filed my invention on the patent application as a classifier, not a sluice. I'm doing my very best to override this nonsense by creating something that can be used legally in all 50 states. And then it just goes on to say a little bit more, and it ends right here. So that's the article that came out in the May-June 2019 Gold Prospectors Association of America magazine. And that's that. So there you go. GTA Vlogs and the others that wanted to see it. And there's Terry right there, New Jersey History Hunters, Eminem Prospecting. <laughs> Alright, catch y'all later.